Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another Unity 3D time lapse tutorial. Uh, before we go forward with the plan for today, I actually wanted to address one thing I forgot to mention last time. The advantage of splitting the mesh. So in the end of the last video, I sort of rambled off about um, our interpret or our implementation of our mesh is such that we have these shared vertices, right? Like these. And this, this is one vertex, this is another vertex, and it's shared by both of these quads, both of these tiles. Um, and I mentioned that one of the advantages, this, of course, is um, that you use less vertices overall, so you save some memory, and that's very good. And then I talked about one of the advantages being that you could sort of break up the mesh and have different ele elevation levels and, and that sort of thing. Um, and I'd forgotten that that's not the real purpose of breaking up the mesh. The real purpose is that you can do some really really efficient graphic work when they're split into two, which is actually the big important thing. Now, I can't actually show this in Unity yet because we don't have the right structure to pull that off at this time, but what you can figure out is in our current mesh, in our big mesh, you know, which is quite extensive, when we want to actually map our tiles, right, we have our, our little strip of, of tiles like this, right, the four of them, so when we want to map, you know, this ocean tile to this square and this ocean tile to this square, we create a brand new texture, right? Our new texture like this, and we actually draw it, we're copying the pixels onto those things, and when we're taking this entire texture and applying it to the entire mesh as a whole. So it means we have to generate a big bitmap. Um, and I did mention that there, it does imply there's certain limitations in terms of our size for our bitmap, uh, because Unity can only go to 4096 by 4096, and there's also all sorts of speed concerns with that. Now, it does allow us to do some fancier sort of graphic blending and blurring effects uh, and different things. So depending on what you're trying to do, this may be the right approach. However, um, the other option, uh, if I start a new document here, the other option that you can only get when your mesh is split. So again, we'll have a series of completely disconnected quads. Now, it so happens that we will arrange these quads um, to be in a group. Actually, let me start one more here just to give me some more room so I can make a 4x4. Four four. So it will so happen that we will arrange these quads, these tiles, so that they're next to each other, so they look like one contiguous mesh. But there will be each quad will have a unique set of four vertices. So that, for example, this point in space actually has four overlapping vertices. So each one of these meshes is completely kind of unique. And the advantage to it is that each one of these vertices can have a completely unique set of UV coordinates. So now, when we've got our tile strip over here, and we're trying to create... We're trying to say this thing here should be an ocean tile, right? So the ocean tile is this one, and we want this to be an ocean over here. Instead of having to create a new 2D texture, we skip that step entirely, saving gargantuan amounts of texture memory, for example. And instead, we just map this vertice to this corner of our graphic, and this vertice to this corner, and so on and so forth. And then this one next door, which is grassland, because it has a unique vertice here, we can map this one, to over here, and this one to over here, and then we have a very minimal texture. This texture here, this four texture strip, could run a, a, a tile mesh that has thousands and thousands of tiles in it without having to generate a whole new image. It's also going to be very, very fast, um, and also easy to change because we can change these sort of UV coordinates, but um, it means there, there's pr some pretty significant implement or um, implications as to how we generate the mesh, and also we need a better sort of more sensible of mapping um, the the tile type to some sort of coordinate in our source tile map, right, or our sprite map. And this also works as a sprite map in that, let's say we have a military unit, and again, we're still, let's say we're still playing this sort of 2D-ish kind of game, our military unit can just be a single quad, and again, we can have, you know, this other sort of tile atlas, the sprite atlas, and, you know, in this particular tile, we have a picture of a dude, oh god, this is getting excessively hard to draw like that, and then it's the same thing, where we map this coordinate to here, and this coordinate to here, and so on and so forth, and it means we don't actually need a unique texture and material for this place, everything is shared, everything just has to be copied to the graphic card once, and again, even though I've drawn our train strip separate from our unit strip, this could 
absolutely be part of the same image, and you can organize it any way you want. You can decide that the first row is all your basic terrain, your second row is your terrain improvements, things like mines, forests, roads, uh, farms, that sort of thing, and then you know, you're going to have infantry units, you're going to have your air units, you're going to have your ships. You can, ha you can arrange it any way you want, and you still only have one frickin' image file to copy to the memory card or the video card rather. So it ends up being very, very optimal. This technique works really good if you're making mobile games as well. Um, so if you're developing for the an uh, Android or the iPhone, for example, and you're looking to make a 2D game, I mean, to a certain extent, Unity can still be a little overkill for a pure 2D game, but it has a lot of really nice helper functions that are handy. Uh, even if you're making a pure 2D game, also most importantly is just the fact that you can publish to multiple different platforms with this one implementation. Um, you know, you do the game once and all of a sudden you can ship to PC, Mac, uh, Linux, um, web player, and of course the various portable devices, not to mention um, consoles as well, PlayStation, Xbox, that sort of thing, although you need some extra licensing and, and whatnot to actually have that happen. So even if you're making a pure 2D game, working in Unity is absolutely positively viable. So I want to make this little video just to sort of fill in this gap of this implementation. We are going to impl uh, implement this. We're going to use this once we generate our actual time mapping system um, but I just wanted to give you a little preview that it's going to come up and I if anyone has any experience with tile mappy type stuff you'll recognize that the approach that I've done over here is not really optimized which I mentioned but I want to give a specific explanation of one of the reasons why this is not optimal although again by having everything be one part of one giant tile one actual texture there's all kinds of little blending tricks that you can do uh, to do that now then speed starts to become a real issue and you start to look at different things. Although it also means you can just sort of generate this texture once, right? And that's what I think things like Civ 5, for example, do is they just generate the texture once, but even at just a zoom level. So when you're zoomed out here, it generates sort of roughly. And then when you zoom in, it'll update a particular area to have the higher quality texture. And then it keeps it in memory. And then if you do something like build a mine on it, then it updates the graphics in only that little region there. So there's different ways of optimizing it. And there's various uh, tricks with video cards and processing and whatever that you can employ at the very high end, but we're not gonna look at that in these particular videos. Anyway, that is it for this. Uh, well, I'll be right back on my end with the, um, with the start of our tile mapping data structure setup. See you next time, folks, bye-bye.